Hey, everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Thanks for staying up for our special live Late Show following the Republican National Convention. Every night has had a theme. Uh, first night was Land of Promise. Uh, then was Land of Opportunity. I assume night is Land of the Lost. Let's get right to what we're calling... This American carnage. Be best. I'm Mike Pence. Good luck. Let them prove somebody was guilty. Now, full disclosure, uh, I did not watch much of the convention tonight. And fullest disclosure, I did not watch any of it. Because right now in America, we're facing a, a global pandemic that has killed 180,000 Americans. Heavily armed Rambo wannabes are murdering people in our streets. The strongest hurricane in the history of the Gulf Coast is making landfall as I speak. And the RNC's message is, who's up for four more years? Huh? Now, I know by not watching the RNC, I didn't do my job tonight. I just want to say, I feel great about it. Why should we pay attention to what they're saying if none of what they're saying tonight is about what's happening in America right now? Why should we watch their reality show if it doesn't reflect our reality? Why subject ourselves to their lies that stick to your soul like hot tar? Lies like Donald Trump cares whether you live or die. You see, this week, the CDC completely reversed their testing guidelines to say that people without symptoms may not need to be tested even if they've been in close contact with someone known to have the virus. That is surprising because we have been repeatedly warned that 40% of infections are asymptomatic and 50% of transmissions occur before the symptoms. Ignoring something doesn't make it go away. If it did, why are there still Valpac coupons? Who on earth thinks not testing is a good idea. If we did half the testing, we'd have half the cases. Of course, it's always the only person you suspect. And oops a cadaver. We found out this afternoon that the CDC was pressured to change guidance on coronavirus testing by higher ups within the Trump administration. So we've reached the point where Donald Trump is dictating our health regulations. That's why the new suggested serving for chicken is bucket. Hey, CDC, this is our lives. Either grow a pair and stand up to this clown or at least be honest and change the Hippocratic oath to first do no harm unless it makes the president look bad. In that case, bag him and tag him. Once again, we are watching a basic function of our government that has always been apolitical die in front of our eyes. We are one new cycle away from the CDC warning that mail-in ballots give you chlamydia. And this is nothing new for Trump. We've watched him violate every norm of the presidency imaginable, blackmailing foreign governments to get dirt on his political opponents, witness intimidation, crippling the post office, and illegally using the White House, the People's House, for partisan campaigning, like his meeting with former hostages, the pardon of John Ponder, the First Lady's convention speech in the Rose Garden, and holding a campaign ad naturalization ceremony for five new citizens. Salah Abdul Samad has been looking forward to this day since he arrived in the United States from Ghana in 2015. Sali speaks five languages. And let's not forget when Sali landed that plane on the Hudson. The minute I saw that, I thought, that guy's in. Federal employees pushing politics in their official duties violates a law called the Hatch Act, even if you come up with some torturous rationalization, like one White House official who claimed 
There was no violation of law because the video was available to the public earlier in the day, and the campaign decided to use publicly available content for campaign purposes. Well, that's like a husband saying, it doesn't count as cheating if it's with my ex. That was just an encore presentation of sex I had before we were married. Plus, I decided to make the video publicly available. It's pretty nice. I waxed. Now, that seems pretty cynical, unless you hear White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows drop the neutron cynic bomb. Nobody outside of the Beltway really cares. Listen, this is a lot of hoopla that's being made uh, about things, mainly because the convention has been so unbelievably successful. Well, he's right about that. I don't believe it's been successful. But here's the deal. The Hatch Act is a law. Whether we care about it or not doesn't matter. What's important is that it exists. A lot of people outside car mechanics don't care what brake fluid is, but you'll miss it when it's gone. Brake fluid? Why, that's just a lot of hoopla! Scene. <laughs> people outside the Beltway should care about every law the president is breaking, and I think they actually do. It's just that it's hard to keep track at this point. You're drinking from a fire hose of scandal, but America, if you catch yourself getting too numb to all of this, The Late Show has a prescription for you. Are you bored and disinterested in things that used to seem important? Like the president using the levers of power to ensure his reelection? Ask your doctor about Not Normal Zoll. Not Normal Zoll is a prescription strength slap to the face that will leave you renewed and reminded that crimes are illegal. Not Normal Salt has also been found effective against thinking treason's no biggie, also known as Bill Barr Syndrome. Here's how it works. Not Normal Zoll contains fast-acting slapacin, which penetrates the outrage fatigue cortex to stimulate your dormant what the hell abellum. Side effects of not normal Zoll may include bruising and not shutting up about the postmaster general saying he's optimizing the postal service. Is that what stealing mailboxes and stacking them like cordwood means? How stupid do you think I am? What's happened to my country? I can't take this anymore! Ow. Ask your doctor if not normazol is right for you and ask him who he voted for. Warning, not normazol should always be taken with alcohol. Here's another reason I'm not watching the convention. I am a TV professional, and it is terribly produced. I know what's gonna happen because they revealed the monster on the first night, and it's them, a multi-headed, spineless creature that lives on your fear. Trump was elected to protect our families from the vengeful mob that seeks to destroy our way of life, our neighborhoods, schools, churches, and values. Look at what's happening in American cities. Cities all run by Democrats. Crime, violence, and mob rule. You may have seen us defending our home as a mob of protesters descended on our neighborhood. What you saw happen to us could just as easily happen to any of you who are watching from quiet neighborhoods around our country. They'll disarm you, empty the prisons, lock you in your home, and invite MS-13 to live next door. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Who are you going to call? Not the police in this case. Now, I know a fear is a motivator. They are desperate to turn out the fearful. But stoking fear is a dangerous game. Last night, there was yet another tragedy in Kenosha, Wisconsin. All this week, there have been demonstrations protesting the shooting of Jacob Blake by police on Sunday. There's been fireworks, there's been tear gas, there's been fires, but yesterday, violence escalated when two people were killed and one injured after a vigilante fired multiple rounds into a crowd of protesters. So much for a well-regulated militia. Cell phone video shows the killer with a semi-automatic rifle opening fire on a group of people. The man with the gun is then seen walking with his hands up toward responding police officers who drive past him. He had his hands up, and the police told him to get out of there, even though everyone was yelling that he was the shooter. Evidently, the Kenosha police motto is to observe and neglect. Well, today, Illinois police arrested the suspected shooter, and he has now been charged and identified as a 17-year-old Illinois resident. 
And we don't know a lot more than that other than two things. This person thought they were a member of the militia, and they thought there was such a thing as a militia. There isn't. There's cops who can legally carry guns and arrest you, and then there are yahoos who can get strapped with an AR-15, buy some camo from an army surplus store, then go role-play the fear fantasy that's been fed to them every night of the last four years. And I'll give you one guess which of these conventions those yahoos are watching. It's the one making a hero out of Tweedledee and Tweedledgun. Assuming it was on tonight. Again, I did not watch. Now, for everyone out there, who thinks that these Black Lives Matters protests are not necessary, or defunding, or fundamentally restructuring the police is not necessary, consider this. The Kenosha police seem pretty cozy with this fantasy militia league. Before the shooting, a local militia group calling itself the Kenosha Guard organized a Facebook event encouraging armed civilians to take to the streets. The group put up this Facebook post addressed to Kenosha's police chief. As you know, I am the commander of the Kenosha Guard, a local militia. We are mobilizing tonight and have about 3,000 RSVPs. Our effort has been made to the national media. I ask that you do not have your officers tell us to go home under threat of arrest as you have in the past. We are willing to talk to KPD and open a discussion. It is evident that no matter how many officers, deputies, and other law enforcement officers that there are, you will still be outnumbered. What a polite request to break the law. Dear sir or madam, I am writing uh, to inform you that I have a 7 o'clock appointment to poop in the town fountain. I have over 3,000 RSVPs. Please do not arrest me, as I prefer not to go to jail. Sincerely yours, Imperial Wizard Dumpington. So, did the Kenosha police tell the heavily armed yahoos to buzz off under threat of arrest like they usually do? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with no. They offered them refreshments. We appreciate you guys, we really do. That's right, they thanked SEAL Team Sucks and gave them water. I believe the brand was 1939 Poland Spring. When asked about the incident, the Kenosha police chief says protesters wouldn't have been shot by armed teen if they weren't illegally out past curfew. That is insane. Justifying murder because it's past curfew has a name. It's called the purge. But it looks like this crime will not be ignored in the courts, or at least on them, because earlier today to protest what has happened in Kenosha and all around the United States, the Milwaukee Bucks boycotted game five of the NBA playoff series. Well, somebody had to show some leadership and the Bucks stop here. And this was a real shock. If you tuned in to watch the game, you just saw an empty court with a few referees on it. And keep in mind, this is a playoff game. It could be the pinnacle of many of these athletes' careers. Is there a most valuable not player award? Because there's some competition today. The Bucks were soon followed by the rest of the league. And now all of today's NBA games have been postponed. And it wasn't just the players taking a stand. On Inside the NBA, this happened. I think the biggest thing now is to kind of, as a black man, as a former player, I think it's for best for me to support the players and just not be here tonight. And figure out what happens after that. Yeah, I, I just don't feel equipped to do that. Wow. That is a mic drop. Or at least a gently unclipped and respectfully set down on the desk in a stunning display of solidarity. I've never seen that before. I think Kenny Smith just took a knee while making a slam dunk. But perhaps the most poignant commentary came from LA Clippers coach Doc Rivers last night. They're spewing this fear, right? Like, all you hear Donald Trump and all of them talking about fear, we're the ones getting killed. We're the ones getting shot. Uh, we're the ones that we're denied to live in certain communities. Um, we've been hung. We've been shot. And all you do is keep hearing about fear. It's, it's amazing to me why we keep loving this country. And this country does not love his back. 
That is why voting in November is so important. Because Donald Trump does not care if you live or die of COVID or of racism as long as he wins. And until we, the people, change this administration, we will continue to get more leadership from the NBA than the RNC. And speaking of leadership, we have a great show for you tonight. The Speaker of the House is here. We'll be right back with Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Stick around.